Okay, so the last part of this tutorial was um, um, sort of tying everything together into this um, very nice theorem that um, the professor already presented um, in class but that I thought was um, sort of important to repeat and not just to repeat but to, to sort of explain in, a, in another way. Um, so um, now that we've seen the uh, NFA, uh, the NFA to DFA conversion, okay, we can now um, sort of reasonably claim the following. Um, so there's actually a typo here, but the uh, set of languages which are um, accepted by an NFA, by NFAs in general, is going to be actually exactly the same as the set of languages, the set of languages accepted by um, DFAs, okay? And the reason for why this is true is because um, every DFA is um, an NFA, okay? Why is this true? Because technically, if you take the transitions of a DFA, so for instance, this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is maybe A, remember the only difference in, the, in, in DFAs and NFAs is the transition function. The difference is that instead of returning a state, the uh, transition function of an NFA returns a set of states. But what we can do for an NFA to be like an, for sorry, a DFA, so for a DFA to be an NFA, we can just slightly tweak um, the transition function of this DFA so that if you read Q1 and a symbol A, it's going to give the set that contains exactly one um, element. So it's never going to be the empty set. It's never going to have more than one element. It's always going to contain exactly one element. And you can sort of see that this is equivalent to just writing, it's not the same, right? Because a set is not the same as, as an element, but it represents the same transition, the same sort of uh, way to read Q1 to Q2, um, for both of these, because in, in both cases, um, there's only one uh, choice, and the only choice is to go to Q2, okay? So in that sense, a DFA is an NFA. A DFA just doesn't use the non-determinism that just allows things to be easier to write, okay? So um, that means that if you write uh, a DFA to accept languages, then that DFA can be converted to an NFA. So that means that all of the languages that are written or that are sort of accepted by uh, DFAs are also accepted by NFAs. Okay, so that's kind of showing this inclusion. Now, if you wanna show the other way, if you wanna say that all the languages accepted by NFAs are also accepted by DFAs, you can, claim that or prove that using the NFA to DFA algorithm. We know that for every uh, NFA, for every NFA N, there is a corresponding DFA uh, M because this, this algorithm here that we, uh, we presented is always going to produce a DFA and it's always going to, most importantly, terminate, okay? So it's a finite uh, algorithm that produces um, a DFA, okay? So this, these two points suggest that all of the languages that are accepted by NFAs are in fact the same as those accepted by DFAs. And so this leads to a, a corollary, which is just a, a sort of consequence of a theorem that tells us that if you wanna show that a language is regular, then remember in tutorial two, we said to show a language is regular, you, uh, you create, a DFA uh, M such that L of M, so the language accepted by M is L, okay? This shows that L is regular, but now because the language is, uh, because, so let me use a different color, the language, all the languages in here are in here, and all of the languages are in here are in here, because of this one-to-one this -one correspondence, okay? What we can do now is, um, instead of creating a DFA, we can make things a bit looser and we can create a DFA or an NFA 
to show uh, such that such that either this one or this one accepts the language and then this this can also prove this can also show that l is regular so then the conclusion is that um, to show that a language is regular what you can do now is you can you can show that an fa so an fa is either a dfa or an nfa so a language is regular if there's an fa that accepts it so um for instance not not i've i've shown you um giving you this this uh, theorem if i use a quick example to illustrate it so remember uh, i think you already know that an bm is regular because it's it's quite easy to find a dfa for it but now um if you want to show that l um is regular um now you now you have the option either you can create a dfa m that accepts it or create an nfa um, n that accepts it and both methods are equivalent so in this case you you might be um uh, you might see that it's it's obviously easier to write an nfa so uh, one possible way to write that nfa would be uh, you start with your initial state uh, it's final because it accepts lambda then you loop a bunch of times on a okay um so then this would be accepted right a bunch of a's would be accepted because here m would be zero and then if you see a b that means you've seen a bunch of a's and then b this is also accepted and then you can loop here and so we can see that this is this is a this is an nfa and it's simpler than writing a dfa because in a dfa you need to add sort of a trap state here um, which you can sort of just just you sort of don't think about it in the nfa um, and so this is another method of showing that um, this language l this language l is um, regular okay so that's it for this tutorial again very sorry about the glitches hopefully they'll be a bit better next week all right thanks